haven't, um, I haven't gotten to the point where everybody else that's in my, that was in my grade, mm -hmm. they're, they're already graduating. They're already graduating. Radio show, man, they everywhere. Tune in for another episode of Make That Radio Show. I am your host, Andreas, and to my right, to y'all's left, I have Jaylene. Hello. Um, who is a, a multifaceted person, as we are all. Or we're not monolith, monolith creatures. Yeah, so y'all go look that word up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do, you know what I'm saying, my episodes. Let's just flow with it. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I feel the flow. I feel <laughs> she feels flowing. the flow. It's mm -hmm. flowing. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say uh, you're. I guess you know, new to the entertainment space, creative space. I am. I am. I, I guess I. You can. I have a bunch of titles at this point. Mm -hmm. So okay. So tell the people some of your titles and some of the things that you do. Uh, producer. Mm -hmm. um, director. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a CEO. Mm -hmm. Um, one more, one more. It, I think the list goes on, but I can't really think about it right now. But I do own Kingdom Production and Records. If you mm -hmm. haven't heard about it, look it up. Mm -hmm. It's on Facebook, Instagram, all of that. YouTube. Um, you say what? YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. Yeah, look it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what got you into what one? What made you or inspired you to where you want to jump into you know saying this space because if you go on your research industries one like you know music per se has this like you know has you know a few dark spots as far as like an industry so what made you want to like you know jump into it um although music could be one of the trades that isn't very popular or isn't the easiest to make a lot of money from. Um, mm -hmm. I always felt like I had some type of connection to music. Mm -hmm. uh, back in school, I was classically trained. I played the violin. Mm -hmm. um, from So for about six years, mm -hmm. I played the violin. I wasn't the best, mm -hmm. but I worked my way up to you know, be something. So, like second um, chair or something? Or? I was first chair my oh. senior year. Okay, first uh, chair. So. Yeah. See, y'all y'all know nothing about that. I, I know something right. about that. Right. He knows a little song. <laughs> you know, little song. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and then as I grew, um, I kind of strayed away from it after high school. And then I kind of got into, like, the club scene later on down the line. And I started becoming friends and associates with different artists. Mm -hmm. And I seen how they functioned, and I seen how different people move and I feel like I had a lot of criticism or mm -hmm. not necessarily negative but I had different ways of advancing how they could move around mm -hmm. and I didn't like how I was doing that for free or mm -hmm. how my talents were being wasted because I could say anything mm -hmm. that doesn't mean they're gonna do it yeah that is true so I decided to you know create my own foundation or my own company to where whatever criticism I'm giving or whatever 
advice that I'm giving is going to be used mm -hmm. to advance. So, so this is your first entrepreneur or endeavor. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, being of a you know a younger generation, do y'all look at entrepreneurship a different way than previous generations? I would imagine. It's like more common for y'all to just go out there and just try it as opposed to, you know, because back in the day, entrepreneurship, people would be like, well, what's an entrepreneur? And this was like, you know, probably a good 10 years ago or something. Right. Um, people looked at it as, uh, as something like, oh, you're lazy and you want to get a job. Um, or, you know, they didn't understand what that was. Or it just had this like negative connotation with it. I don't think it has that anymore. Mm -hmm. due to all the different platforms and information being put out there and the success stories. Um, what would you say, I guess, coming from your perspective, like, how do you view entrepreneurship? Is it something that, you know what I'm saying, is just it's something to do or it's the next logical step or? Me personally, I can see how entrepreneurship is taken as being lazy or, mm -hmm. you know, I can see that, but on on my end, I didn't, jump straight into college. Mm -hmm. I didn't, um, I haven't gotten to the point where everybody else that's in my, that was in my grade, mm -hmm. they're, they're already graduating. They're already, mm -hmm. you know, so to me, it was personally like, I know I'm smart. I was an undergraduate, check me out. Mm -hmm. Um, but to me, I didn't really get that opportunity, mm -hmm. um, with my circumstances. So mm -hmm. Kingdom Production and Records is my form of my diploma is my form of okay. success, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. I'm not being lazy. I'm, I'm grinding. I'm working. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like my generation could probably be kind of lazy with it because with an LLC, I think that it's something that you shouldn't take advantage of. Or like you shouldn't take for granted. Mm -hmm. And the people that I'm working with, like you, mm -hmm. my mentors and, and stuff like that, I feel like I... I have no reason to be lazy with it. Yeah, yeah, you know, it would be a totally different thing if mm -hmm. you was lazy with it. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, but different conversations here. Yeah. Um, so, what is something that you've learned that you necessarily didn't know or couldn't research before, you know, jumping out there and learning about, you know, music and, you know, business in general? Something that I learned is that it this can be taken in life and in business, but mm -hmm. everything is way more than just seeing it, thinking it, and speaking it. And mm -hmm. you kind of got to put everything into motion. Mm -hmm. So through networking, through reaching out to people, through just giving a helping hand to others, it, it mm -hmm. comes back to you, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I think that what I have learned is that first impressions are everything. Mm -hmm. The way that you represent yourself to people, the way that you, if I'm 23 mm -hmm. and if I present myself to others as a 23 year old girl who doesn't really know what she wants in life, but she has a production mm -hmm. company, mm -hmm. I think that I would be way more behind mm -hmm. than where I'm going now, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Good. So the way that I present myself advances me. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people say that they see me, they don't view me as a 23 year old girl, you know, like mm -hmm. they, I, I can have conversations. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's all about your presentation. Yeah, and I think, um, uh, I think this is one thing that is not taught growing up right is that once you become an adult you're in the adult world mm -hmm. and there's no like yes there's different levels of adulthood but when it comes to functioning everyone holds everyone else accountable at the adult level so like yes if you're 18 you're 23 you're 25 you have to remember that you're playing in a world with 30 year olds, 40 year olds, 50 year olds, 60 year olds. And the only thing is that you haven't gotten that experience exactly. in being like, you know, in those environments of professionalism and things of that nature. Um, so, yeah, there's a certain status uh, quo that you have to meet um, 
or demeanor or presentation, like you said, that you have to understand that you have to be elevated at in order to participate in those environments. But I don't think people talk about that. Yeah, I think that's that's very slept on. It's very, I think that in order to succeed, no matter your age, mm -hmm. 30, 23, 50, it's all about how you present yourself. Mm -hmm. That's that's the way in the door. It's, Gives you the key, honestly. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so how has your um, reception been as far as, you know, your core? You're like, hey, I'm about to jump out here. I'm about to do this in these spaces. Where they're like cheering for you, like, yay, go do it. Or it's like, you know, a little reservation. Like, hey, I don't know if you want to do that. Or did mm. you get mixed reviews or? Yeah, I think in the beginning there were a lot of mixed reviews. Mainly people were more of like, yay, go do it mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, I had a few that's kind of like, okay, so you know what you're taking on, right? Mm -hmm. You know exactly what you're trying to do. And honestly, I think that any entrepreneur doesn't really know exactly what they're doing, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Like, this is a label. It's a production company, but it goes beyond. Mm -hmm. It's so much more. Mm -hmm. Like. I'm directing videos, I'm basically managing people, like, <laughs> it, it moves in so many different routes mm -hmm. that, honestly, it's it's more than the initial idea that I had. Mm -hmm. And there's so many ways to make money and there's so many ways to advance people. I think that it's all about the love that you have for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, regardless of if they were, woo, go do it or... Mm -hmm you know what you're doing i mm -hmm. think that it's all about the motivation that that mm -hmm. singular person has so so being in a creative space working with creatives mm -hmm. um what's your biggest takeaway thus far mm, my biggest takeaway thus far from because i haven't really been doing this too long mm -hmm. but it feels like forever mm -hmm. <laughs> so my biggest takeaway that i could say and that i hope it would be able to help others would be to, you have to have a strong backbone and you have to be able to detach emotion from business. Mm -hmm. That's probably the biggest thing that I'm learning. I, I, I usually give myself about 24 hours to kind of like cope with certain things, but mm -hmm. when it comes down to like business and emotion wise, mm -hmm. that's the main struggle I've had throughout this entire thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have the solution. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have the solution, but what I can say is that it gets easier mm -hmm. as you go. Um, everything needs to be written down. Everything mm -hmm. needs to be documented. Everything needs to be signed. Um, anytime you're working with somebody, it kind of has to go beyond. Like, you can be friends. Mm -hmm. You can gain a friendship or a personal relationship with whoever you're working with but I think that when the light turns on or when it's when it's action time mm -hmm. that all kind of got that mm -hmm. has to Let's go cut to the side. out yeah. yeah I think that's the biggest thing I've learned so far or am learning mm -hmm. so so you did the black eyed peas cover song mm -hmm. um, tell us about that process and getting that whole thing done because I don't think people realize uh, the magnitude uh, to pull off a production like that it it really was beyond what I could have imagined that it would have been. Um, a lot of people don't know the background behind why I did the um, why I chose the Black Eyed Peas song. So um, in eighth grade, mm -hmm. we studied. Shout out to Miss Urban, my language arts teacher. But um, we studied um, symbolism. Okay. Um, and we used the Black Eyed Peas song, the video, to mm -hmm. study the symbolism. There was a, I think it was a triangle or a square, but it had mm -hmm. like a, a question mark in it. Mm -hmm. And every time, in, in each scene, you would see it at least one time. Mm -hmm. So that was like the point of the symbolism or whatever. Um, and we, we used to love that song. Mm -hmm. You know, as kids, we're singing it going down the hallway, it's stuck in our head. So... Me being me, I um I was in college, um, and one day they called me to the office and they basically told me that I wasn't gonna be able to proceed with my classes because um 
my job is supposed to be paying for the classes but mm -hmm. there was a mix up with the payment or whatever and they told me the day before they were the ad drop period mm -hmm. so i'm in the office i'm boohoo crying i'm like oh, no not my classes <laughs> and i had this one class that i really really liked i think it was um sociology mm -hmm. and the teacher people. yeah so the teacher at the end of each class i only got to go to this class two times mm -hmm. so at the end of each class he told us um he was like okay so we discussed way we discussed problems with the world mm -hmm. in the class and at the end of the class he would tell us okay so now go figure out a way to resolve them mm -hmm. you don't have to be be the change or make the change but you know be it mm -hmm. change it in yourself mm -hmm. so after i got kicked out of class my car broke down mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything's just going wrong. <laughs> Everything's going wrong. And me, I value myself with like not letting my circumstances like mm -hmm. break me because I'm also a mother. So I don't know. Somehow that that entire situation with my car and school kind of tied. It gave me a glimpse of eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Where's the love? I'm feeling mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't feel love right now. Like mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So I'm gonna make a remake to the song. Okay. Why? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I'm, that's what was told to me to do. So mm -hmm. I made a remake to the song. I sat, I had interviews with, with each artist. Um, there was actually supposed to be a couple of other artists on the song. Mm -hmm. um, but they didn't, they weren't able to commit to it. So mm -hmm. every month we had, um, we would have a meeting on about the fifth of each month. Mm -hmm. um, towards the beginning, each meeting was more of like business and what we got to get done but later on down the line it became more of like we're just catching up you know where's your mental at today mm -hmm. this type of thing mm -hmm. and we we grew a bond i feel like that that made the video and the song so much better so mm -hmm. much more the authentic the, yeah the chemistry relationship yeah if there, you yeah. if you watch the video i really recommend that you watch the video but towards the beginning of the video everybody was kind of like you know tight and because Although um, black male, Dartes, they already have experience behind the camera, mm -hmm. but they didn't really have the production experience, if that makes sense. So although they already have their background, they were still kind of tight. They were still kind of like appalled with like mm -hmm. all the, the surrounding lights. And exactly. The production. So walk into a space and see. Right. All the you can see the dollars all over there. Exactly, you can see it. <laughs> so although they they had that experience, they were still kind of tight. So towards the end of the video, you can see how they loosened up and mm -hmm. they 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 showed where the love was. I could tell mm -hmm. that throughout the process, they were trying to play kind of hard or whatever, but they actually liked the song. Mm -hmm. It was probably one of their first songs where they were spreading positivity. Or well, man, he's all about positivity, but. It was kind of, really I feel like it's still a different, it, yeah, yeah, in a different light, yeah, a different light. So they were kind of play, trying to play it kind of hard, but I knew they liked the song. I knew they they liked, they loved the experience. And personally, to me, it grew a love for mm -hmm. bringing artists together or basically producing and directing. Mm -hmm. I seen a vision in my head mm -hmm. and it came to light and it was mm -hmm. way better than I could have even imagined. Um, it was more of like a modernized, modernized version of Where's the Love because mm -hmm. I think in their video they were running through the streets, um, basically sing, rapping the song or whatever. But in mine, um, we did the news feed mm -hmm. because the, the in this day that's how we get our news. Mm -hmm. That's how we spread what we. That's how they spread what we're supposed to hear. Mm -hmm. So to me, the news feed was more of like, I want, I need, I'm broadcasting it to the world. So regardless of if the numbers didn't really do as well as I expected it to, mm -hmm. I think it was still a, a great first project. I think the numbers did well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, considering right. uh, everything, you know, and I think, you know, sometimes as entrepreneurs and when we create something, we're a little too harsh on ourselves for expectations and you know uh in order to get like you know these huge numbers or whatever it requires huge commitments and energy and resources and all that or whatever and if we don't have that at the time then you know it's really kind of hard 
to get other people to buy in. But the fact that you put it together, you provide an opportunity for people to showcase themselves in a different manner and a different light is a great thing. All right. Um, now you're moving on to the uh, platform that you're building. Mm -hmm. so you want to talk a little bit about that? Oh uh, yeah, so we're bringing on Rising Sound uh, to the making area. Um, Rising Sound is going to be a platform for basically, I don't like to use the word inexperienced. Okay. But, okay, so what's another word for inexperienced? What inexperienced? You oh, you know, I can go down the road <laughs> probably. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know they're not they're not trained or untrained. Oh, let's see here. Uh, that, that might be a negative connotation. Yeah, too. I, I feel like inexperience is more. Like, I don't I don't like to use that word. But just starting or rookie. Yeah. Okay. So, Rise and Sound will be a platform for rookie artists to basically showcase their talents. So. The initial idea is you do uh, like a cover to a song. I think everybody favorites covers i think everybody mm -hmm. if you i like to sing in the shower mm -hmm. <laughs> and to me i sound like beyonce so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so i feel like everybody loves a good cover because we already know the words uh, yeah you don't already have been, to memorize uh -huh. you know what i'm saying already so, been promoted enough to where you exactly. learn the words yeah i so, think it makes sense though so you do a cover um but it's not just you're doing a cover you have to work your way up to the final presentation. Mm -hmm. So Rising Sound will basically be a series of episodes to where I kind of do what you do, like mentor um, mm -hmm. the artists mm -hmm. to where they're they're ready to be mm -hmm. in the the music game. Mm -hmm. um, it'll show it'll present like media training, uh, studio training um, you know, how to present yourself in front of a camera, how to present yourself in the studio, mm -hmm. um, the different aspects of studio time. To me, I didn't even know that, like, I'm thinking you go in the studio and it's a long, drawn out process, you know, but it's actually, it can be quick. It's, it's something that if you're, it's, pre if you're prepared for, if it. you're prompt and prepared, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so, so. <laughs> yeah, my experience, whether it be, uh, writing sessions or, mm -hmm. Uh, producing with the actual producer, um, more of a you know, director or whatever in those settings, um, and, or recording. It's all about preparation. Exactly. Um, I don't like wasting studio time. Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. Time, you know, it gets up there. Um, and it becomes very expensive. Exactly. And some people, you know, but I get it though, because like I've, I've gone to the studio uh, with an inkling of what I want to do. But also, I allow creation and inspiration to take place at the same time. Exactly. Um, so, like, I'll be with an engineer, and he'll be sitting there playing different um, notes and stuff like that, and, and sounds. And right. I'm like, oh no, I like that one. I like that one. And then once we have a a skeleton, excuse me, of a beat laid down with some type of tempo to it, then I can start writing okay. to it. And then he's while I'm doing that. He's still adding more instrumentation. I'm letting him do mm -hmm. his thing because you know he likes to get in his bag and stuff too, or whatever. Right. Then it becomes this whole you know collaborative thing where you know one song might might took like three hours. Exactly. Um, but I'm like, it it happens like that. But to go in there with no idea of anything and not to get those creative juices going or whatever, I'm like that's a waste of time, money, and everybody's space and all that. Whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Basically, just a board day a hobby or something <laughs> yeah yeah um and then like i don't uh i know you know people got their own little things some people like you know like to drink or whatever or smoke or whatever the case would be i don't have to do any of that right um, i can just tap in um but some people you know they have to relax those senses and stuff like that or whatever right um but i also think if too much of that can hinder exactly what you're it'll trying block. to do is what it, uh -huh, it'll, it'll block, block. Mm -hmm. yeah so what do you want to accomplish with uh, Kingdom Productions and Records? So you said it right. Yeah, you got it. This I got it. This got it. <laughs> so KPR <laughs> uh, with Kingdom Production and Records, I want to accomplish. Um, I don't know. I see myself in big lights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, what is Bruno Mars billionaire? Uh, I want to be a billionaire. Mm -hmm. I want to um, be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't 
at first I wanted to kind of be like my face, my name, but now that I'm in the game and I'm kind of seeing how everything functions, I'd rather be behind the scenes. I'd rather be, I want to sign documents. <laughs> I want to approve, that's it. But with Kingdom Production and Records, I kind of want to expand my hometown first. So mm -hmm. like making, I mm -hmm. want to bring light here mm -hmm. first and then kind of move into the world if that makes sense so i'm gonna use making i don't want to say use but i'm gonna use making to basically build your resume build my resume exactly so for instance with rising sound rising sound would be me showcasing how i can help artists build mm -hmm. because I, eventually i do plan on you know doing management and things in that nature so mm -hmm. I think that that would be the perfect way to um, bring something new to the city mm -hmm. um, and to also showcase what I can do mm -hmm. as far as um, kind of like in school, a, a teacher is, is taught to mm -hmm. give the criteria to the student and if they don't understand it fully, you, you teach them more and they're mm -hmm. supposed to pass it. Mm -hmm. So I'll be advancing an artist to the next level, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's what I plan on doing. It's 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 gonna be a long journey, mm -hmm. but I'm in it for a long time, not a good time. I like that. With that being said, okay, you're gonna check out some new music by this artist. Idiots. <laughs> 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 I am the biggest dog of the underdogs Heard a bitch feelings with my monologues You ain't running shit, that's a light jog I'm eating rappers, no Ramadan It's Malay blue in a blue bonnet Killing more bitches than a blue bonnet Fuck the red one, fuck the yellow one Ain't nothing better than that blue sonnet Look. Hold up, hold up, hold up I don't think y'all heard what the fuck she just said Let me run this shit back I am the biggest dog of the underdogs Heard a bitch feelings with my monologues You ain't running shit, that's a light jog I'm eating rappers, no Ramadan It's Malay blue in a blue bonnet Okay, so if you had the power to change So far, like, you know, your experiences with the industry and all that And just even entrepreneurship in general If you had the power to change one thing, right? To where you just change it What would it be? Okay Explain that further <laughs> Well, change know, one thing about entrepreneurship entrepreneurship or like the music industry um if i had the power to change anything it would be um unity okay i feel like in this day and age everybody wants to be better than the next and they'll do anything to get there mm -hmm. and that that includes knocking the next person down mm -hmm. when in all actuality, if, if this artist was to jump on this song with this artist, they could really blow up, if that makes sense, you know? No, 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 it does. <laughs> so, no. I feel like we all, or, or, yeah, we all have the platform that we need, but in order to get it to more people, why not come together? Like, it doesn't have to just be a feature, it could be a joint interview, it could be a joint, you know, certain things to where we come together. We could all run down the road together mm -hmm. and, and record it you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. that's something people will watch mm -hmm. and i think that these days we have to watch our backs so much and i feel like it shouldn't be that way everybody you never know who's really for you or against you yeah you know you got a lot of misrepresentation out there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah so I, I think that's that's fantastic that you actually say that order because i've been saying that stuff for years yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go back and watch these old interviews. Right, <laughs> it's in there. Um, I've actually tried to do things like that. I've tried to get come together just as uh, black entrepreneurs. I've tried to uh, get to come together as you know a lot of different um, entertainers and stuff. And I think I've done my fair share as like getting different people to collab and all that, or mm -hmm. at least open to the idea to where they can form their own relationships. Right. Um, I'm but per to, me personally, yeah. I think that you do that on a daily anyway. Mm -hmm. So they they know what's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I also try like with the, like the whole podcast and the media and stuff, right? All right. I've tried uh, getting other podcasts together to, and I, I can revisit that idea. But this was like a couple of years ago before more people popped up. I said, look, 
I can put together a media package where people can run through and do all these different outlets or whatever in like one day, two days, whatever. Exactly. And then now they have exposure to like, you know, seven, eight different platforms and everybody's being paid and then the people who ran through or whatever, they're getting all this exposure all at one time. Right. Because it's synchronized releases. Right. Um, or like it'll go for like two weeks or whatever um, and it keep their name relevant. Mm -hmm. They do it in Atlanta um, all the time. They have like independent media outlets that band together they'll go do an event 30 40 artists come through and it's like a red carpet type situation where they're going through one two three four five i just recently did something like that with pink um when she did that back porch lounge mm -hmm. um where i was there and a few other outlets was there too now i think uh, some more people should have been there um and again you know I don't treat this like a hobby, as you can tell. Exactly. Um, a right. lot of people treat stuff like this like a hobby. I don't know why, because y'all can be making money. 30 minutes already. Um, so yeah, I don't treat it like a hobby. Um, like I've seen others. Um, and it takes like, you know, those capital investments and stuff. But you can get so much more out of it. Right. Uh, you get people, you know, like you're doing, you're building a platform to where, you know, you get to offer the opportunity to those who wouldn't necessarily have an opportunity anywhere else. Right. Because someone got to come to you first before they come to me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not just going to put you out there if you don't like, and not, not, not I've told artists this, you got one song out or you ain't even got a song out. What are we going to talk about? Exactly. There's nothing to talk about. Right. Because my audience expects like, you know, these full in-depth uh, interviews and they watch them. Um, so you have to have something going on. So why not go over here to this platform? This, that's what they're doing. So then once you go through that process, now you have a story. Mm -hmm. Now you got something to talk about. Exactly. So come back over here. And it's documented. Exactly. And we can talk. Right. Um, so yeah. But I love the fact that you said unity on that though. Um, I'm still pushing for it. You know, I haven't given a hope. Yeah, I so, think it's still, it still can be accomplished. Yeah. I just think, you know, we need more like-minded individuals to get on board. Right. Um, and commit to it too, because you might have some people that just don't have as bad timing for them. Right. Like, I get to come from this place of privilege, one, because I'm full time with this. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So I can commit to projects and stuff like that or whatever. Um, everybody else have aspirations to it, but they might not have the time to do it or whatever. So again, I'm just looking for some more full-time entrepreneurs out there. So y'all know, y'all come on board. And the ones who want to transition, come on board too. We're going to get you ready. Unity. Um, exactly. Unity. <laughs> that's, that's the word of the day. Unity. <laughs> so let everybody know how to get support. Um, if they want to inquire, things of that nature. And um, she also writes treatment plans. I don't know if she oh, said that earlier. Definitely. Yeah, I do. Um, so you write some dope treatment plans. So if y'all have concepts out there for music videos and other things that you want to present, definitely hit up uh, Jaylene. Um, but tell them where they need to be directed to. Uh, so you can find me on Facebook at Kingdom Production and Records LLC. Um, there's also an Instagram. It's Kingdom PR 2023. Uh, YouTube, go subscribe, please. Um, but if you would like to inquire about anything, if, if any new artists are looking for, if you want to be a part of Rising Sound, I'm more than happy to work with you, um, for a reasonable fee. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like um, and you can, you can definitely find me on Facebook. That would be the quickest way to, um, to reach me, but any other social media, I'll respond. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to give, you know, a special thanks and shout out to Andres. Uh, he's not only the interviewer, but he is my mentor and he does great, you guys. Uh, so if you're ever looking for any work, you have to have some, um, you know, background. But he'll definitely yeah. work with you for a reasonable fee. Reasonable um, <laughs> like you said, I like that. I'm going to be clipping it every time I say something. It's, it's going to be your for a reasonable for fee. A reasonable fee. <laughs> right there yeah. for a reasonable fee yes um. so i just want to say thank you and thank you to everybody who's been working with me supporting with supporting me um please just you know subscribe go like the page and follow the journey thank you that's what's up so as y'all hear y'all going y'all follow and of course you know all the social media stuff will be there and if you have not go ahead and download the app um oh my iphone users for the app is being redone so you might not find it on the app store 
It's going to be I have meetings I have to do with my web developer and stuff. This app is about to be, uh, yeah, all of it's about to be fired. <laughs> I got 100 or something features now that I got to decide on which ones For to. For Banked Out? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we had to redo some of the app or whatever. Um, but everybody's going to get who's downloaded, whether the native app, the web-based app, or the other one. You're soon with the next couple months or whatever. You're going to get a notification. It's going to say, update your app. And now you, do, you click on it, and it's going to update and you're gonna see all this new stuff in there. So yeah, yeah, more stuff coming <laughs> to y'all. But you can always visit the website, web, uh, bakedoutradioshow.com. You can also go to the social media handles and all that stuff, Baked Out Radio Show. Check out all the different interviews, content and stuff like that, and follow the skits. And if you've been watching my page, my profile page, uh, you've been seeing the skits and stuff. And thank y'all for keep sharing those and following. Um, it keeps going up, so. Y'all, and also send me some people y'all want me to interview. If some people out there have not interviewed, send them my way and I'll uh, get them interviewed. I've been hungry for my father's love Cause life been trying to eat me up Food deserts inside the town I had to rain and be for lunch Nutritional value is in value Times are nowhere in the present day I use my breath to speak help But smoke my breath away Quite contradictory But addictions help keep the stress away Beat my fix with the foreigners in the neighborhood Many going broke for a tote Shopping for vapes and woods They got the nerve to tell us money isn't